In this interaction, I will talk about the introduction to CAM design, some of its uses, and then its connection to the basic form bar mechanism. So at the end of this interaction, if you follow this lecture, you will be able to define the CAM follower mechanism. You will be able to identify some of its uses. And then you can also connect it with the four bar basic mechanism, which is a one degree, one degree of freedom mechanism. Basically, cams are used to convert rotary motion to auxiliary motion. So if something is rotating, you can take that rotational motion to have some oscillation out of that. So most of the cases are that. But there are also few cases when the oscillation motion is being converted into rotary motion. So the input cam has some oscillation and it moves in such a way that the output motion becomes rotary. But most of the time, remember, that cam follower mechanism converts the rotational motion to oscillation motion. Like in this video, in the right picture, you see this gray shaft is the input shaft and this orange uh, shape thing on this shaft is the cam. So that because of its changing profile, the cylinder attached to it moves when its profile, its height is increasing, the cylinder moves up. When the height is decreasing, it moves down. So this is how this oscillation is being produced, which this follower is being attached on the gray, uh, on the gray shaft. So cam is the input and follower is the output of this mechanism. Similarly, in the left picture, this purple thing is the follower and these orange, orange uh, things or elements are the cams. So cams are rotating and because of their change of profile the followers are following the path given by the cam. So that's why these are called follower. So the cam follower mechanism is a mechanism which is used to convert rotary motion to oscillatory, motor, oscillatory, oscillatory motion most of the times. So this is another example. If you see that the cam follower uh, mechanism is used at many applications throughout. Uh, if you see around here, the example I'm giving is the automobile engine. So the engine has uh, valves in the cylinder. This purple thing is the piston and this yellow thing is the casing or uh, of the of the cylinder or block in which this yellow cylinder has the moving piston in it so if you have to introduce the oxygen or fuel and uh, air ratios these valves are used it's also used for extracting the uh, burned gases out so these valves must be opened at a specific timing and these valves are attached with a follower, which this green color thing is the follower. And these are attached to this shaft, which is the camshaft. And on that camshaft, these two green cams are mounted. So these green cams have a profile synchronous to the timing of this piston cylinder in such a way that when the cam uh, size increases, the follower rises up, opening the valve, and the, when the cam is down, the valve is normally closed. So the valves are being closed or opened with the help of this cam follower mechanism. And if you see this shaft, the cam shaft is further attached to the crank shaft. So this grayish bigger shaft is the crank shaft. This is the shaft which is the main power mm, producing shaft in our engine. And this crank shaft has the connecting rod and the uh, piston mounted on it.
okay so this is how these two shafts in parallel which are connected with a bell drive moves the automobile engine and the automobile engine is primarily controlled by this action of the valves which are uh, very precisely functioning because of this cam follower mechanism similarly you can see many applications around in the world uh, in textile machinery like very big spinning mills they move with the help of the cam follower mechanism and uh, similarly if you look around in any machine you will see that cam follower mechanisms are uh, very efficiently used uh, they have many advantages of uh, over other uh, machines and mechanisms initially if you compare the cam follower mechanism with the linkages or the mechanism which are just using links uh, the cams are easier to design because you have to follow some functions and the input functions help you to give the desired output function so they are very easier to design thanks to the computational power now they are even more easier to design you can use uh, any software like MSE Adams or a Dyna Cam to design a cam uh, which will help you giving the specific output. But uh, once you have drawn the, you have designed the cam, its manufacturing is very difficult and expensive as compared to linkages. So if you compare to, to linkages, the cam designing is easier but their manufacturing is troublesome, is difficult and expensive. Uh, but you need to understand there that every mechanism is being uh, originated from the basic four bar mechanism. So if I try to uh, draw a four bar mechanism and basically this is a four bar mechanism with O2 here and O4 here so this is the ground link link number one this is link number two this is link number three and this is link number four so when you are watching a cam follower mechanism like like I try to make a cam for follower mechanism here so you draw a cam follower mechanism I draw here and I draw another uh, mechanism here so if I call this as cam and I call this as uh, follower so this mechanism if I ignore the red links here this is an effective four bar mechanism this is because uh, I have basically removed this uh, coupler out of this and the curve I'm watching here, if it is centered at this point and the curve of the follower is if centered somewhere here, let's say I call it here this time, just to avoid confusion. And I make this mechanism here. So this is link number two now. This is link number four now. And link number three has been removed and it has been replaced by this off joint so where we studied earlier that if you remove a link from a mechanism its degree of freedom uh, is uh, reduced by one and but if you introduce a half joint instead of a full joint it increases the degree of freedom by one so one link removing removed make the degree of freedom zero and then when we uh, introduce this half joint the mechanism had restored its one degree of freedom so this cam follower mechanism also have one degree of motion which is effectively working like a four bar linkage so i drew the four bar mechanism for one position so as the cam will move and the follower will move further there will be a new position and there, there will be a new effective four bar linkage so for any position of the cam follow mechanism there is an effective four bar mechanism and it will have the same motion as the original cam and 
So every cam follower mechanism is a four bar linkage with uh, variable length. So if I quickly redraw the four bar uh, a cam follower mechanism, if like if I have uh, this one as the cam, okay, and if I have uh, uh, this one as the follower and uh, as the cam is rotating the follower will be changing and this sliding uh, contact will be somewhere at a, at a, at a new location so some if it is here now at the next moment it will be here it will be here so for every new position of the cam this follower will have a corresponding uh, new position and with the corresponding new position the four link lengths effective link lengths will be changing so if for example at the moment if effective lengths are uh, here in the very next position very next instant these positions will be changed and these changed positions will have the new link lengths as a b c d d will remain constant because the distance from uh, o to o4 will remain constant but other three link lengths will be changing okay so that's why cam follow mechanism is also known as uh, a four bar linkage with variable lengths so when we were working with the four bar lengths we were not able to change these four link lengths but here we have the advantage that we can also change these three link lengths so that's how the cam follow mechanism is connected with the four bar mechanism so i hope that you could understand the basic definition of the cam follower mechanism its uses and how it is connected to the four bar mechanism if you have any further questions uh, let me know i will try to answer them in the comments or i will try to make a new video if it is a lengthy answer